In part two of our Hot Topic Roundtable on social CRM, Bill Band, Brent Leary, and Paul Greenberg discuss the future of the concept and make distinctions from CRM implementations of the past. When CRM first got popular, as a technology. As vendors started creating the tools, it seemed in, in a lot of cases the technology got in the way of the concept of CRM and in many cases created more complexity and less customer value than the concept originally intended. So do you think that there's a danger that incorporating now social tools into the CRM platform that this might happen again? Uh, Bill, do you want to start with that idea? Yeah, to me the uh, complexity uh Social CRM is going to be, as I said earlier, is going to be less around the technology. I mean, there is a lot of now new technology available, and all these vendors are coming in and, and, and trying to figure out how to add value to this broader broader idea of helping com- companies, you know, get and keep customers, which you know, hasn't changed. But the, but I don't hear a lot of people struggling so much with the technology, other than as Paul said, to maybe try to understand what role different technologies can play. But the the complexity is more conceptual around how how are we going to be able to use these tools in processes in a way that's going to you know benefit the customer and benefit the company. And no, no one really knows where those sweet spots are, and 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 that's and it's really hard to think about interacting with customers when you have to start incorporating the idea of, of social dynamics. I mean, this is a very young conceptually still a very young field. So I, to me, the complexity is more the strategic and business process understanding of how to incorporate you know, social ideas into your model of, of engagement with customers. And how about you, Brent? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the technology is going to get even uh, easier to use. And, and I'm going to look at this more from the social customer's perspective, because I think that's where companies really need to be focused. They, they want companies to interact with them the way they want to be interacted, where they are, how they do it, talk their language. It's getting easier and easier for social customers to express themselves. We're able to use these great smartphones to do everything that we needed to stay in a a lab, a computer lab to do years ago. Now we can do everything on the go and it's getting more prevalent. And so I think the challenge for companies is to, as Bill said, it's not more, it's not really as technical as maybe in the past as it is conceptual and really trying to stay with the customer's demand, you know, because they're the ones moving the market here. They're they're the ones that are fully embracing social technologies because we're social and we, we want to be able to talk with people about the things that are important and we want to do it in any way imaginable that we need to do it. So it's really up to companies to understand that and to try to game plan and strategize for that as opposed to just, you know, the internal needs for what we used to do with traditional CRM. And how about you, Paul? What do you What do you think? Well, again, I'm agreeing with both uh, Bill and Brent. And uh, you know, the, one of the things that uh, that almost irks me, I have to admit, is that there's a, there's a nonstop discussion about the technology, and there's a lot less of a discussion about the strategy and the and the, and the processes and the like. When you know, when you start looking at the general discussion that's kind of out there on the web about this stuff. But what's interesting is that um, you know, guys like Bill and Brent are the ones who kind of relocate it, you know, to where it's supposed to be, you know, around the hows, the, you know, not so much the what technologies are out there and what's going on. Because what Bill's point from the very beginning of the broadcast was that the complexity itself is that it's actually considerably simpler to do the integrations nowadays. And the other side is that people are living with technology a lot more than they did five years ago. I mean, it's just simply what they do. So what you have now is you have a situation that when you start actually sort of spreading your wings a little bit and looking outside your immediate discussion circle, um, all of a sudden you see these companies that are implementing things that are not technology driven. They're driven by the needs of social customer interaction. So for example, I had a conversation with uh, yesterday with Lane Bryant, you know, the, um, the plus size clothing uh, or apparel chain. And they, um, they, are, they launched a full-blown uh, uh, social network for their customers And they've got millions of customers called Inside Curve. And the thing is that um, this is a full-blown social network. It's thought out from a strategic standpoint. The culture, uh, you know, the cultural transformation necessary at the company occurred so that it could be done. Um, It's recruiting customers now in the thousands or, you know, just through the soft launch. 
uh, so that because it's got the kind of interactive capabilities, features, and and it's thought through the nature and the mind of the of the social customer that they do have, and um, and there's some very interesting concepts around it which I won't get into here, but the reality is that you know there, there's a business case that led them to do this, not a technology issue. And when you start looking at the implementations of these things, where unlike in what, what's kind of fascinating to me is that unlike and I'm, this is more hypothetical or hypothesis I'll say I'm not I haven't confirmed this yet but I'm starting to see where in in the old days you know meaning in traditional CRM old days of you know four years ago you know people would tend to throw this technology as the solution now technology is part of the solution but it's not the way they've been thinking they weren't thinking we implement the technology that's going to solve the problem they actually work through what they need the technology for before they actually use, utilize the technology. And this is something I'm starting to see routinely in practitioner companies. You know, the, at least from what I'm seeing, the, the practitioner world is actually thinking much more strategically. And I don't think we're going to have the same kind of problem for that reason and because people just live with the technology as a piece of what they do as routinely. It's, there are these new uh, vendors that have sort of cropped up over the last couple of years uh, an example of one I mentioned Batch Blue before, but they do something. On, it's not even related to the technology. They do something on Twitter every Tuesday. They call it the SB Buzz. It's uh, two hours of basically nonstop talking and communicating communicating around subjects that are really of interest to small business. They started maybe uh, four, three or four, maybe five months ago doing this. Uh, they've done it every Tuesday. They have over 9,000 people following them on, on this SB Buzz um, profile on Twitter. And they have about 150 people that actively participate every Tuesday night in these discussions. And it's not anything about their product. That's one of these things like uh, we keep talking about that I think is going to be important for vendors of all sizes to understand. It's not just about their software. It's about the challenges that the people they want to do business with, what they face, and how you can help them. And so even when it doesn't appear to be you know, about your product, or you know, you do things specifically for that audience, and you can use these social tools and technologies that they're already using to participate, not drive it, but just participate, that really uh, helps them to get engaged and understand this whole process a little better about how they can use social media to, to, to really connect meaningfully. So my, my final question for each of you is, uh, will social CRM eventually just be CRM? And Bill, do you want to start with that? You know, if I had to say it simply, yes. I think that uh, what's, what's happening um, is the consumer, his behavior is changing, you know, as fostered by these new, you know, communication capabilities. And that means companies are having to adapt to those new social customers and therefore the idea of social CRM really gets assumed into the broader topic, not strategy, topic of how do we effectively engage and manage relationships, our, the, our, our relationships with customers, which has always always been the, the core idea that CRM has all, always been about. So uh, I think that it just becomes part of the larger, but in, new and improved, so to speak, uh, conceptual framework and technology framework for managing uh, customer engagement. And Paul, what do you think? Uh, Absolutely agree with Bill. I um, social CRM will be CRM. Uh, there's a couple of things I would say to it. Um, at one level, I actually don't care either. <laughs> I, I truly don't care wh whether it is or it isn't. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to look to me. There's two things. One is that that companies start thinking in terms of customer engagement rather than customer management. And number one and number two is that they develop what they need to develop to in, uh, to have that kind of interaction with their customers and you know they can call it CRM they can call it MRD they can call it you know they can call it um, nothing at all I, I really don't doesn't matter to me one way or the other I mean it's always useful to have some name I, of course but the reality is that we're dealing with I, I to me the fundamental has to be for companies to actually develop customer engagement strategies and from that standpoint make a point of um, of then going on and figuring out what it takes to actually execute on that period. And whatever you call it, you call it. And what are your thoughts, Brent? I, I totally agree with both Bill and Paul. Uh, whatever you need to call it, just as long as you do it, you know, that's the main thing. I think sometimes we get caught up in the uh, 
the holy wars of what we we should be labeling things and what's the definition and quite honestly you know for every business that's out there there should be a different different definition of crm and social crm because it's totally about you know specific to their business so call it what you will just let's get it right this time that's great well thank you to uh bill paul and brent for joining me today our pleasure thank you thank you